I wrote this poem for The Guardian in March uh, during the Gulf War after seeing uh, a picture which has become a kind of icon um, of that war, a roasted uh, Iraqi soldier leaning through a burnt-out truck uh, on the road to Basra. And I call the poem A Cold Coming, which is a quotation from a poem of T.S. Eliot's The Journey of the Magi, the three wise men making their uh, journey to a nativity in the Middle East. And this uh, is a poem which is um, uh, a nativity of the New World Order. And the cold coming I had in mind, though, was uh, related to a small item I read in the news about American soldiers freezing their sperm before they left for the Gulf. A cold coming. I saw the charred Iraqi lean towards me from bomb-blasted screen, his windscreen wiper like a pen ready to write down thoughts for men, his windscreen wiper like a quill he's reaching for to make his will. I saw the charred Iraqi lean like someone made of plasticine, as though he'd stopped to ask the way. And this is what I heard him say. Don't be afraid, I've picked on you for this exclusive interview. Isn't it your sort of poet's task to find words for this frightening mask? If that gadget that you've got records words from such scorched vocal cords, press record before some dog devours me mid-monologue. So I held the shaking microphone closer to the crumbling bone. I read the news of three wise men who left their sperm in nitrogen, three foes of ours, three wise marines with sample flasks and magazines, three wise soldiers from Seattle who banked their sperm before the battle. Did number one say, God be thanked, I've got my precious semen banked? And number two, oh, praise the Lord, my last best shot is safely stored. <laughs> and number three, praise be to God, I left my wife my frozen wad. <laughs> so that if their fate was to be gassed, at least they knew their name would last. And though cold corpses in Kuwait, they could by proxy procreate. Excuse a skull, half roast, half bone, for using such a scornful tone. It may seem out of all proportion, but I wish I'd taken their precaution. <laughs> they seemed the masters of their fate with wisely jarred ejaculate. Was it a propaganda coup to make us think they'd cracked death too? Disinformation to defeat us with no post-mortem milliliters. Symbolic billions in reserve made me, for one, lose heart and nerve. On Saddam's pay, we can't afford to go and get our semen sold. Sad to say that such high tech's uncommon here. We're stuck with sex. <laughs> if you can conjure up and stretch your imagination and not wretch the image of me beside my wife, closely clasped, creating life. I let the unfleshed skull unfold a tale I'd been already told and idly tried to calculate the content of ejaculate. The sperm in one ejaculation equals the whole Iraqi nation times roughly, let's say, 12.5, though that 0.5 is not now alive. Let's say the sperms were an amount so many times the body count. 2,500 times at least. But let's wait until the toll's released. Whichever way, death seems outflanked by one tube of cold bloblings banked. Poor bloblings. Maybe you've been blessed with of all fates possible the best, according to Sophocles, i.e. the best of fates is not to be a philosophy that's maybe bleak for any but an ancient Greek, but difficult these days to escape when spoken to by such a shape. When you see men brought to such states, who wouldn't want that best of fates? Or in the world of Cruz and Scud, not go cryonic if he could, 
spared the normal human doom of having made it through the womb. He heard my thoughts and stopped the spool. I never thought life futile, fool. Though all hell began to drop, I never wanted life to stop. I was filled with such a yearning to stay in life as I was burning, such a longing to be beside my wife in bed before I died, and most to have engendered there a child untouched by war's despair. So press record. I want to reach the warring nations with my speech. Don't look away. I know it's hard to keep regarding one so charred, so disfigured by unfriendly fire, and think it once burnt with desire. The fire has flayed off half my features. They once were like my fellow creatures. Till some screen-gazing, crop-haired boy from Iowa or Illinois, equipped by ingenious technophile, put paid to my paternal smile and made the face you see today an armature half-patched with clay, an icon framed, a looking-glass for devotees of kicking ass, a mirror that returns the gaze of victors on their victory days, and in the end stares out the watcher who ducks behind his headline, gotcha or behind the flag bedecked page one of the true to bold type setting sun. I doubt victorious Greeks let Hector join their feast as spoiling spectre, and who'd want to sour the children's joy in Iowa or Illinois, or aging mothers overjoyed to find their babies weren't destroyed. But cabs be flagged with sun front pages, don't help peace in future ages. Stars and stripes in sticky paws may sow the seeds for future wars. Each Union Jack the kids now wave may lead them later to the grave. But praise the Lord and raise the banner, excuse a skull's sarcastic manner. Desert rat and desert stormer spared all scars and maybe trauma. The seamen bankers are all back to sire their children in the sack. With seed sown straight from the sower, dump second-hand spermatozoa. Lie that you saw me. And I smiled to see the soldier hug his child. Lie and pretend that I excuse my bombing by B-52s. Pretend I pardon and forgive that they still do and I don't live. Pretend they have the burnt man's blessing. Then maybe I'm spared confessing that only fire burnt out the shame of things I'd done in Saddam's name. The deaths, the torture, and the plunder, the black clouds all of us are under. Say that I'm smiling and excuse the scuds we launched against the Jews. Pretend I've got the imagination to see the world beyond one nation. That's your job, poet, to pretend I want my foe to be my friend. It's easier to find such words for this dumb mask like baked dog turds. So lie and say the charred man smiled to see the soldier hug his child. This gaping rictus once made glad a few old hearts back in Baghdad, hearts growing older by the minute as each truck comes without me in it. I've met you, though, and had my say, which you've got taped. Now go away. I gazed at him, and he gazed back, staring right through me to Iraq, facing the way the charred man faced. I saw the frozen file of waste, a test tube frozen in the dark, crib and kaba. Sacred Ark, a pilgrimage of cross and crescent, 
the chilled suspension of the present. Rainbows, seven shades of black, curve from Kuwait back to Iraq. And instead of gold, the frozen crocs crammed with mankind on the rocks. The congealed genie who won't thaw until the world renounces war. Cooled spunk, meticulously jarred, never to be chara or the chard. A bottled Bethlehem of this come curdling cruise scud cursed millennium. I went, I pressed, rewind, and play, and I heard the charred man say, 